Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an ombre tumbler tutorial with three different colors of glitter creating a triple ombre. This cup also features an ice topper lid and that video will be posted on Monday. Let's get started. Today we'll be using glitter from C&S Glitter Emporium, Susan B. Anthony, Susie Sunshine, and Angel Wings. These are all linked down in the description below for you. Here we're going to start the epoxy process. I'm going to be removing the painter's tape from the inside rim of my tumbler. I placed this there prior to spray painting to help catch any overspray and keep the inside of the tumbler cleaner for less cleanup later in the process. I'm going to be applying about one to two milliliters of epoxy on this tumbler and I'm going to really want to work it around the tumbler. So I just put it in one area and keep working it around the entire tumbler. It does help if your tumbler is a bit warm and so you can either hit it with your heat gun or do as I do and place it in front of a small space heater for a few minutes before you apply the resin to it. Now I do want to make sure that the coat is very thin and that I don't leave any gouging finger marks or rivets in the epoxy from my glove and my fingers. So I do like to take the palm of my hand and kind of pat all the way around the tumbler to even that out. It evens out that epoxy and gets rid of any possible finger strokes because I am using ultra fine glitter, they will show from underneath the glitter if I don't have this nice and smooth. So just be sure you go all the way around your tumbler with your palmed hand or let it spin for a few minutes. I like to use manila folders or some sort of office folder to catch the glitter underneath my cup when I'm applying it. So I'm just gonna have one out for each color, make things go a little quicker, and I'm gonna get the glitter open so that we can just start the process and move right along. I like to start with my darker color or my bottom color first, so I'm gonna start with this green. I like to start with my darker color because if I get some in an area that I don't want it to be, I can easily take it off prior to starting with any other color. So I'm going to go around the base here and I'm just going to start tapping kind of an even-ish line all the way around the tumbler with the color because this is going to be our focal point when we start creating the ombre effect down the tumbler. I'm also going to make sure that I cover the bottom of the tumbler at this time and I'm just going to make sure the coverage is really good. Many people like to take and dip into this pile here of glitter, the bottom of their tumbler to make sure they get really great coverage. Um, I do that if I need to, but I'm okay on this one. I'm gonna aim right at that line I created and I'm gonna have my tumbler at a tilt, but not tilt it up too far so that the green doesn't go too far down into that yellow. And I'm just gonna create a thicker line here to help with that. And then I'm just going to aim in the same spot all the way around the tumbler and take your time here. Like the slower and the more you just kind of ease into it instead of trying to hurry up and get it done, ultimately the better your ombre looks. You don't end up with areas that go way down too far and have to go in and do too much fixing. So you notice I am just lightly tapping that glitter out of the container and I'm focusing on the same spot on the bottom rim of the cup all the way around allowing the glitter to fall. Now this isn't going to be my full coverage coat in the mixed color area so the green to yellow because I do want some of the yellow to fill that in. So I'm not aiming to cover the spray paint but get a good coverage. I'm going to tap off the excess and we're going to move on to the next color. Now I like to go into my top color next because I really like to blend that middle color. That's where I get my blending. So I'm going to go in with the angel wings and I'm going to do exactly the opposite, 
holding it at an angle pointed down this time not too far I don't want it to go in this area so I'm gonna just get good coverage in the top and I'm gonna start with the rim and I'm gonna basically create that same line that we created when we did the bottom I'm gonna just go all the way around the cup slowly working and again, if you like to work on a turner, you certainly could do this working on a turner. You would just be, instead of tilting your cup, you would be holding your glitter shaker higher to get that ombre down into the other colors. So now I'm just gonna slowly start tapping all the way around, just as I did from the green, I'm gonna Focus on the one line there and just slowly let that glitter start to fall. I want it to cover most of the white area here, but it's okay to leave some of that yellow. That'll help create our blend. So stay focused on this line and just keep allowing it to fall and blend. Once you've gone all the way around the cup, I do like to hold it upright when I tap with the scissors and allow that extra loose glitter to fall down. And again, that helps with that ombre and that blending effect. So now we're gonna work on this yellow area and the yellow is gonna fill in here at the white and the green. And I'm gonna focus it to make sure that I get good coverage in the very middle and let it blend into our other two colors. Now we'll start with that yellow, and this is Susie Sunshine, and I'm gonna focus in the middle of the yellow area here. I'm gonna tilt it down for the green and then tilt it upwards to go into the white, but I'm always gonna be focusing on sprinkling the glitter in the middle of the cup. That does two things for me. One, it allows the glitter to fall down into some of those empty spaces where the colors meet, and two, it allows it to get a full coverage in the middle of the tumbler. So I just go slow, tapping lightly. Um, anywhere there is already full coverage of your glitter, it will just shake off when you tap it. So I'm not as concerned in this step about glitter going in places I don't want it to be, but I do wanna be able to have the opportunity to come back in with either the green or the white, Susan B. Anthony or Angel Wings, and fill in or blend out that ombre a little better if needed. Once I'm happy with that center coverage, I'm gonna tap off the excess and take a good look at it and see if I need to add any green or white to it. And I do see some areas that I don't have completely blended that I wanna add some white to to really create that great transition. So as you can see here where I hold it, you can still see it's, it's blended nicely on the bottom and it looks great, but here at the top, I do wanna add some white. So I'm gonna let the white fall and it's gonna fill in any areas that do not have glitter on it yet, which is why it didn't have that beautiful blend like the bottom already did. So I'm just gonna go all the way around the cup. I'm kinda carefree about it because it's only gonna stick to where there's not previous glitter and I'm gonna tap off that excess. So now it looks pretty good and I'm ready to let this layer of epoxy dry. I don't need a full cure on it, I do need it to dry. And then I'll be able to dry brush some excess off of it and it'll help make that full ombre look great. So I'm gonna, after that, I'm gonna brush it off. I'm going to seal it with clear spray or a sealant of your choice, and then you will move into the next steps of epoxy. So here I just wanted to show a quick video clip of how I reverse weed any decals that are gonna be um, done with a really thin font, like a hand-lettered cursive font, because all those little pieces make it a little tougher to weed. And so reverse weeding by just putting your transfer tape down straight onto your decal, turn it over, and then remove what you normally would first. So put all of it onto your transfer tape and then take it off. It makes it much easier to keep all those small details intact.
finally, the last steps for completing this tumbler is going to be to place your decal. Now on a few of these cups, the decal has been placed and an additional layer of epoxy has gone on it. So you may see me sand over that. But I place my decal, I seal over my decal with CCDIY's quick coat. That'll be linked down below in the description. And I use a 220 grit sanding block. I want to pay attention to the rims, both top and bottom here, as well as maybe any minor flaws that may be remaining. So I'm going to also be really focusing on that bottom rim. I want it to be very smooth and flawless as can be. I use a 220 grit sanding block and I do sand over this um, exhaust fan here. It pulls in the dust particles and keeps it away from me as well as I am wearing an RZ dust mask. So I'm just going to sand all the way around the bottom and on the edge really well until it's a complete smooth surface. And then I'm going to check the rest of the cup and see if I see any little areas that may need a tiny sanding. I'm going to go at an angle around the top rim and then it will be time to wipe it all down. I wipe it first with a soft cloth to get the excess dust off and then I go in with 91% alcohol and a coffee filter. The last step is to take the CCDIY's Fast Set. I put it in a little measuring cup and with a gloved finger, I just dip my finger in and apply it to the rim and the decal if it hasn't been previously epoxied all the way around each of these cups that I'm working on. This process has just truly helped to give me a flawless finish on the rims of my cups, so I continue to do that. I then just finish off this process by adding my logo and moving into the final two coats of epoxy. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. We will be creating the ice lid on our next video, so I hope you'll join us for that as well. It is a cute um, topper that you can add to these margarita cups or to any fun summer cup. I'll drop a picture here and we'll see you again soon.